Hi everyone, this is Tom. Nice to be um, here with you today. When most of us think about Map Publisher, it's to use that uh, fantastic software to import geospatial data into the graphical world of Adobe Illustrator for making maps. What I'll be talking about today is the opposite of that workflow, how I used uh, Map Publisher to create geospatial uh, data, uh, specifically the Natural Earth uh, data set. The project launched in 2005 with my partner, Nathaniel von Kelso. And I'm sure you're familiar with Natural Earth. It's very popular. It's been downloaded uh, over 10 million times since its inception. What I'll be doing today is discussing some of my tips and tricks for creating geospatial data with Map Publisher and in Adobe Illustrator. But before uh, doing that, let's do a little review of Natural Earth itself. Here, um, Natural Earth did not uh, start off as a comprehensive data set at all. Uh, initially, Nathaniel and me, we decided we would try to imitate the natural color maps made by Hal Shelton back in the 1960s and 1970s by combining land cover data and shade relief. Here we're looking at northern South America. As you can see, it's buffered into ocean areas. And what we needed uh, were coastlines and uh, rivers and lakes to complete this, uh, this view. So this is what it ended up looking like. But getting this data proved to be pretty difficult. Uh, initially, we looked at Digital Chart of the World and VMAP0, the successor uh, database to uh, Digital Chart of the World. As you can see here in northwestern or northeastern Brazil, it's, there's a voluminous amount of data, and the data coverage is, uh, is variable in its uh, density. You know, obviously, if we were going to use this, it would take us months, if not years, to pick through all of the drainages to uh, come up with the data set that we needed. So what we turned to was uh, the CIA's World Data Bank 2, developed back in the, uh, the 1970s. I uh, got an old version of Microcam exported uh, World Data Bank 2 out in DX format, DXF format, and imported it into Map Publisher, and then began our editing to this uh, database. Here's a, uh, an early mock-up of, of, of Natural Earth. Uh, Nathaniel and myself were making all kinds of notes about the attributes, and we're also editing the, uh, the geometry as we went along. One of the things we uh, discovered is that Adobe Illustrator uh, can only handle a maximum of 32,000 anchor points on a path or a polygon. And if Map Publisher imports a path or a polygon that has more than 32,000 points, it automatically generalizes the line, which can, as you might imagine, create um, all kinds of problems with registration and so forth on your maps. So what we did in Natural Earth is the, the long coastline strings, uh, we snipped them uh, so that the lengths were under 32,000 uh, vertices, and also we split up the uh, polygons so they were bite-sized chunks. Here we see the ocean polygons uh, that have been split up in Natural Earth. And you know, once we had uh, all the geometry of Natural Earth sorted and we had attributes uh, assigned, um, here's where the real magic happens in the map views window of map publisher. If you go to the, uh, the flyout menu up in the upper right, you'll see a, a very handy export uh, feature. Here I'm exporting the ocean um, coast layers. And what's really cool about this is uh, essentially if you have a map layer, anything that you draw on it, any, any path or any polygon can be exported as geospatial data and shared with other people. And if you assign attributes to uh, those data, um, the, uh, the database file is also exported along with the, uh, the projection information and, and so forth. So this is just a, a wonderful feature that's built into uh, Map Publisher. And here, uh, here's some of the export options that you see. Uh, for Natural Earth, obviously, we pick uh, shapefile format, but there's lots of others that you could choose from. So uh, the initial version, again, of Natural Earth was uh, published in 2005. And uh, since then, we've been updating uh, rivers and lakes with supplemental uh, data coverages. 
We've done that for North America. Uh, Europe is also available. Alex Fries is working on South America presently. And uh, in the last few months, I've been working on Australia uh, rivers and lakes. And what I'll do now is just talk a little bit about how I've created that supplemental data for Natural Earth. If you uh, download Natural Earth right now and look at the, uh, the hydro coverage, uh, this is what you'll see for Australia. You know, Australia is a you know, pretty dry continent, so there's not a lot of uh, you know, rivers that you'll see. But this is what the, uh, the new data set, the supplemental data set, will look like when we eventually publish it on the website. Uh, as you can see, uh, we, we've included uh, many more intermittent drainages and uh, lakes. So where did this, uh, this information come from? Um, I'm, a, I'm an opportunist when it comes to uh, bringing data into Natural Earth. A lot of times it's just these, these big online uh, data sets that uh, you find. In this case, uh, I, found, I, I really lucked out. I found this, this uh, reference map of Australia published by the government. It's in the, uh, the public domain. It's at a scale of one to nine million. The scale of natural earth, the most detailed version is at one to 10 million. So the scales are very uh, comparable. As you can see, there's uh, you know, drainages uh, on this map. They're all labeled as are the uh, intermittent lakes. Uh, I was thrilled to see that this, this map was published with projection information. So that enabled me to uh, uh, use GeoReferencer in Map Publisher to GeoReference it and then uh, reproject it into the uh, uh, geographic projection for incorporation into uh, natural earth. And what's more, this map was available as a PDF with Adobe Illustrator editing capabilities, which meant I could just extract all the line work that I needed straight out of this map and bring it into natural earth. Well, with a caveat, I had to do some editing um, to the line work. Uh, for example, uh, since we're you know, creating a data set uh, that cartographers will likely transform into uh, different projections, it's very important that uh, rivers flowing into water bodies such as oceans and, and lakes, that they, uh, the, uh, the mouth of the rivers snap to a vertice. Also, uh, for lakes, uh, we don't want to have uh, breaks in the river coverages where they flow in and out of lakes. So what we do is we include lake central lines. We just basically draw these lines in the middle of, uh, of lakes. This is very handy if you're creating a map and you want to filter out small lakes, but still keep the rivers. That way the, the rivers run uh, continuously across the map. Also, if you're doing a uh, historical map, you know, reservoirs obviously didn't exist uh, several hundred years ago. And this way you can show the hydrography as it might have appeared uh, in the past. Another uh, important thing, uh, uh, unsurprisingly for me, is that the, uh, the drainages have to uh, precisely register with the small scale shader relief that's available in uh, the Natural Earth data set. Here we can see that the, the rivers are snugly fitting the, uh, the Southern Alps of Australia. Another critical concern is because you know, all of the data in Natural Earth is uh, linked together, connects. Uh, Administrative lines uh, need to, where they follow river courses, need to coincide with the river courses exactly. And here we can see the boundary between Victoria and uh, New South Wales states following the, the river uh, very uh, precisely. So a lot of editing goes in to make sure that that um, happens and that you don't have to worry about it when you're using natural earth. So the um, the Australia map data uh, needed to, to be smoothed and generalized a little bit. And I have a four-step process that I use in Illustrator uh, coupled with Map Publisher for doing that. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you live right now in Adobe Illustrator. Actually, it's not live since this is pre-recorded, but let's just pretend that this is a, a live demo. So here is that, uh, here's a sample of the data from uh, that Australia map. I'm going to uh, copy this over and start processing, and you can see what's going to happen to it. Also, let's go to uh, wireframe view so we can see the anchor points and the lines a little bit more uh, precisely. 
you know, looking at this, you'll um, you'll agree that uh, the river doesn't really look too much like a river when we're zoomed in like this. There's just a lot of angularity to the river and also to the uh, the water bodies. And you know, uh, you know, the first thing I think most of us think about when we see uh, lines like this that need uh, generalization, well, let's go use the built-in simplify tool in Adobe Illustrator. So let's uh, let's give that a, a try first and see what happens. Go to Object path and simplify. Here's the palette. We have to open it up. And let's uh, hit the uh, preview here and see what happens. Okay, we're, we got it previewing. Let's you know, crank the curve all the way over to smooth and also, and also uh, minimize the number of points. And you can see regardless of where I bring the sliders, the, uh, yes, the, the path is becoming simplified, but still there's a lot of angularity to it. You can see these little these points almost like, like look like little horns. And I don't know about you, but I've never seen a river in nature that flows uh, anything like that at all. So bottom line is that the built-in simplify tool in Adobe Illustrator is not the, go, uh, the way to go about you know, generalizing uh, hydrography um, in a data set. Fortunately, Map Publisher has a wonderful tool for doing uh, just that. Let's go to uh, Map Publisher, uh, Simplify Art, and this dialog appears. Uh, the first thing you'll see is two different methods. These are two different algorithms. The, the default is Douglas Poiker. The other option is Visvalingham Wyatt. I prefer the Visvalingham Wyatt uh, algorithm. It, it's uh, a little less angular in its results. And to use it, you know, you s simply select select uh, the units that you want to use. This is, you know, pretty small scale data, so we'll use uh, kilometers. And then you can uh, enter a value, hit preview, and see what happens. You know, obviously this line is uh, very coarsely generalized at this point. We went from an original uh, uh, 237 vertices down to 80 uh, vertices, so that we we just filtered out a lot of anchor points. That's way too much. But uh, you know what you can do is then experiment with different values. I did this before, and I happen to know that 10 works out fairly well. It takes out a lot of points, but it still keeps the general alignment of the drainages uh, and, and lakes in this case. Now, you know, just looking at this, it uh, it's not quite ready for prime time. As you know, you know, rivers, you know, tend to flow very sinuously, and this is not sinuous um, at all. So there's another thing that we could do. We'll select this, and there's a very uh, very nice script by a fellow named Sato from Japan. It's called Round Any Corner bring up the dialog for this. You can see there's a default value of 10. You could vary this, but frankly, I don't find much difference in the, the, the radiuses that you put in there, and I just always go with the default value of 10. Click OK, and look at that. Uh, this is now looking more like a stream ought to look like on, on a map. Now, there's a, uh, a major problem with this right now. Uh, what round any um, corner does is it converts the the lines to Bezier curves, which can't be handled in in um, geospatial databases. We need polylines with lots of little straight line segments. And uh, you know, obviously, if we were to convert this, you know, to straight line segments, it would look jagged again. If we were to export this uh, from Map Publisher as a shapefile at this point in time. What Map Publisher would do is add lots of vertices to these lines and 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 create polylines, but the problem with uh, a direct export from Map Publisher is it it adds you know th you know thousands of vertices, way too many. In fact, let's let's take a look at uh, what happens if we go to Object Map Publisher, and I'm going to go to Path Utilities, and there is a an option for convert Beziers to polygons. This is what the export would look like. You can see how many vertices have been added to the line. So if you're dealing with a world data set, there would frankly just be too many uh, points in the data set and, and it would bog, bog down. So let's undo that and look at some other options. 
for converting this um, these these paths to straight line segments segments. Uh, what we'll do is before converting it to straight line segments, I am going to add a few more anchor points to this uh, to line, um, and let's see what happens. One way to do that is to go uh, into scripts again. Uh, Bernhard Yeni has a very nice uh, script called Add Vertex. It uh, you you can add extra anchor points. It works off of page units in Adobe Illustrator. Um, I happen to know that five millimeters in this case puts a nice number of additional vertices uh, on the on the paths. Um, Add Vertex is very nice when you're small. You're dealing with small data sets. However, if you're working with large data sets, it really bogs down and is not really the way to go. What I prefer to use instead is, is Map Publisher. We'll go back to Path Utilities. And there's a handy little feature called Add Detail. Uh, we're dealing with kilometers, so we'll set that the units to kilometers. And in this case, uh, well, let's just try five kilometers and see what happens. So now what Map Publisher has done, has it has added uh, vertices on all these paths every five kilometers. So we, uh, we've densified the number of vertices on the path. At this point, what we could do is go to another script. It's called Extend Handles. Incidentally, all of the scripts that I'm showing you are available for free, and um, I'll have some links at the end of my show uh, showing you where to get them. Now, we don't really want to extend the, uh, the, the handles at all. In fact, we want to set them to zero. So essentially what happens when you set them to zero is the Bezier curves no longer are Bezier curves. You have lots of little straight line segments, as you can see here. So at, at this point, we could go ahead and export this as a shapefile, and it would work very nicely um, in, in, a, in a database. Now, there's a, a couple other things that we could do to this. If you look at this and you think, oh, you know, I, I re I'm, I'm really conscious of how many anchor points that we have on a line, then you could go into uh, the object menu back to the uh, default simplify in Adobe Illustrator. We'll open that up. And if we hit the convert to straight lines, uh, it starts weeding out anchor points based on the angle between the anchor points. The default is 150 degrees, which is kind of crazy. But if we bring that down to five degrees and we'll hit preview, you can see that uh, it's starting to weed out some of these uh, additional anchor points. We'll put it to 10 and see what happens here. So on the, on the straighter stretches, we could remove uh, unneeded anchor points. And on the curved uh, sections, they will uh, be retained. I think in this case, probably, I'm just going to weed them out very minimally, three degrees, click OK. And there is our line. Uh, I will say that this process is not perfect. Uh, you can see there's a, a little bit of a, an angle here. I might go in there and actually do a little manual editing to get rid of that, you know, that that pointy uh, section. You'll also notice that this uh, this lake where the stream runs into it and runs out of it, they uh, they don't join, and that's because when we applied the round any corner, it kind of sheared off the the ends of the lake. So a little bit of editing needs to be done to make connections there. In fact, let's just do that. I'll select the uh, the lake, and I'm going to get my pen tool and added an additional vertice here and just snap that up to the stream. Since we know the terminus of the stream is where the lake ought to be, and we'll do the same thing down here at the, uh, the bottom, and bingo. Now we have a lake that's uh, more or less the shape of what was there originally. Oh, and then remember those lake center lines. Um, to do those, you know, what I would do is just simply eyeball a central line in the middle of this lake. And then when done, snap to the vertices. And then when we assign the attributes, we would call this a lake central line so we could uh, uh, call it out or remove it uh, where needed. 
So that in a uh, nutshell is how I go about prepping uh, the geometry of hydrography that goes into uh, natural earth. So at this point, uh, the next uh, stage is to assign attributes. And as you might imagine, this is a, a very tedious task, and I'm not going to go into much detail about this. I'll just tell you a couple things that I do when assigning attributes. The first thing is when I create a new um, attribute column, in this case it's feature class. So, you know, are these, you know, intermittent rivers, perennial rivers, uh, uh, whatever else that we have in Australia. What I look at is the default value, and I tend to um, put the most numerous item in the database as the, the, as the default. And what that means is that when the, the column is created, you can see intermittent rivers here indicated in blue, I could go and then just uh, edit those rivers that are not intermittent at their perennial and saves me a lot of keyboard uh, typing. Um, another thing that's very handy in Map Publisher, and this is a relatively new feature, it's spatial join. And with spatial join, what you can do is you could transfer attributes from one data set to another be they lines or polygons. Here we're looking at uh, lakes in Quebec province, uh, Canada. And what I'm doing is transferring attributes from one data set that has names to uh, another data set of lakes that does not have names. Uh, you can see there's this relationship category that's uh, that I have circled here. I find um, when the, the two uh, databases are the geometry is slightly different that the has center in relationship uh, works uh, best in my purposes not perfect uh, you still have to go in and inspect to make sure that everything was transferred over correctly but wow this is a, a huge time saver mm -hmm. and it's also very handy if you're doing editing on a uh, on polygons using the Pathfinder uh, uh, tools. When you apply uh, Pathfinder effects, the uh, Pathfinder blows out the attributes. So if you keep a, um, a copy of your original data set with attributes, do your pa Pathfinder operations, what you can do afterwards is transfer all of those attributes to the edited uh, data layer and then just go on your merry way. Finally, I just want to point out um, what I consider to be uh, the best uh, hydro attributes that we have in natural earth and that's the stroke weight attribute with stroke weight you can see uh, there's various numbers listed for the uh, the the rivers uh, what these are are suggested stroke weights and when you apply those stroke weights using the uh, select attribute feature in map publisher to the rivers what you could do is create the sense of uh, stream tapering so this is just a, a very quick and easy and convenient way of applying stream tape tapering in map publisher and that uh, that wraps up uh, thanks for your attention um, if you have any questions, there's my email address. Take a screenshot of this. Also, you'll see uh, various online resources that I've uh, mentioned uh, during my talk. Take care.